Hello everybody, welcome to this webinar brought to you by Bursa Malaysia and managed by LifeChain. Today, we are going to cover this topic, leverage and inverse ETF, how to capitalize from volatile market. So in short, we are going to learn how to use this tactical tool called leverage and inverse ETF to profit in a bull and also in a bear market. So today we are very excited because we have invited a very active and also renowned ETF issuer on Bursa Malaysia to come to share with you more about leverage and inverse ETF and how you can maximize the returns in a bull and also bear market using this LNI ETF. All right, so are you guys ready for these sessions? Okay, I seen that uh, Good evening. Yes. Awesome. All right. Okay, cool. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm Shane Chu. I will moderate this session. Okay, before I begin, just as usual, disclaimer, whatever you share on this webinar is only for educational purpose. In no way that I give any recommendation to buy or sell any companies in this uh, webinar. So uh, if you decide to buy or sell or make any investment decisions after this webinar, uh, you do it at your own risk. All right, so it gives me great pleasure to introduce our speaker for today. So uh, she is none other than Ms. Chong Li Chu. Now, Ms. Chong is currently the Director of ETF and Innovation Lab of Afin Huang Asset Management Berhad. So she is responsible for developing strategies and products for the exchange traded funds business within Afin Huang Asset Management. She has over 13 years of experience specializing in wealth management products. Now, prior to Afin Huang Asset Management, she has worked with Alliance Bank and Standard Chartered Bank. So, uh, Li Chu holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Mathematics from the National University of Malaysia. So, Li Chu, are you ready? Hi, good evening, Shane. Yes, I'm ready. Yes, awesome. So, today <laughs> we are very glad to have you uh, on this Bursa webinar to share with us more about leverage and inverse ETF. So, over to you, Li Chu. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, let me share my screen instead, yeah. Okay. Let's go back here. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope all of you had your dinner already. Um, maybe just, you know, I, I like to keep things, um, you know, make things more interactive and not, you know, me talking to myself because, you know, I, I cannot see all your faces, so I don't know whether you're listening or not, right? So I, I like some interaction. So now that, uh, uh, you know, you, there is a chat uh, box here, um, so feel free to type in anything uh, in there to, to interact with me. So maybe before I start, because today we're going to talk about leverage and inverse ETFs, and I'm not covering anything on the basics of ETF. So how many of you here um, don't know what ETFs are? Okay, if you don't know, I'll just quickly run through. But if you know, I'm just going to totally skip that. Okay, so if you don't know, you want me to do a very quick introduction as to what ETFs are, uh, type, it in, type it into the, the chat box or you can raise your hands. Okay, uh, if, if I see any, you know, okay, quite a number of hand raises. Uh. Okay, okay. Means uh, a lot of you may not know. Lah, huh? So let me just do a very, very quick run through as to what ETFs are. Okay. ETFs are exchange traded funds. So if you know what unit trust funds are, ETFs are more or less the exact same thing. Except that number one, it is traded on the stock exchange like any ordinary shares. So instead of um, you know, an investor going to a unit trust consultant or unit trust agent to buy the ETF, you can now buy um, you know, a fund on the stock exchange, just like how you trade stocks. And then the second pointer is that ETFs are index trackers, or we like to call them ETFs are passive strategy or passive investment, whereas unit trusts are actively managed. So what is the main difference? The main difference is um, in unit trust fund, the fund manager plays an active role in finding good stocks on your behalf, right? So they do a lot of research. So they need to spend a lot of time reading, you know, analyzing the market, analyzing the companies before they decide to buy. And their objective of uh, the fund 
the unit trust fund is really to um, outperform the benchmark. Generally, it's like your, your typical KLCI or S&P 500, etc. Whereas on the other hand, ETFs are index tracker and they are passively managed. What we mean by that is that uh, ETFs are actually um, you know, not actively managed. The fund manager doesn't need to crack their head, analyze the market and see what stocks is good to buy right now. Um, on, uh, what they actually do is they will then um, find an index and just track it. So in other words, you are in, when you invest into an ETF, you are essentially investing into an index because the objective of an ETF is merely to track a particular index. Okay, so I guess all of you here, if you have heard of ETF, I'm sure you have heard of the S&P 500 ETF, which is the largest ETF in the world. Okay, and that was the very first uh, product that was launched, uh, an ETF that was launched in the US uh, because, um, you know, people want to invest into an index, but they can't do it. Okay, of course, now you have futures like, and things like that that, you, that gives you, um, you know, the, the, the uh, opportunity to invest into an index. Okay. Now, uh, well, somebody said precisely what I don't need. Someone to choose something for me. Yeah, okay. So then perhaps ETF could be something uh, suitable for you because you may not need um, uh, you know, a fund manager to, to do that for you because the minute the fund manager actively manage your portfolio, like it or not, the fees are definitely going to be higher, right? The management fee that you pay on a yearly basis will definitely be higher simply because the fund manager actually needs to actively source um, you know, for, for companies to add into uh, the fund. All right. Okay. Now, let's now go into uh, leverage and inverse ETFs. I hope I've answered you know, well, very, very briefly your questions. Uh, you can also put your questions uh, in the Q&A box. And then later on, I think uh, Shane and myself will take some of those questions and, and answer them. Okay. Now, um, let's start off with what are leverage and inverse ETFs. So ETFs are index tracker, like I mentioned. Leverage and inverse ETFs are designed to give you, um, you know, like his name suggests, a leverage exposure and an inverse exposure. So a leverage exposure uh, is kept uh, at two times, meaning that if the index goes up, by 1%, that leverage ETF, the two times leverage ETF, wants to deliver you two times that daily return of the particular index. So if let's say, for example, if I have an index, um, let's say, for example, if it's KLCI, if KLCI goes up by 1% today, then the two times leverage ETF, simply put, will give you 2% return on the day. Okay, so you don't have to borrow money, you know, from the bank to, to essentially leverage up your exposure. You can actually get it uh, simply by investing into a two times leverage uh, 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 ETF. Okay, of course, later on, uh, I, will, I will go in quite, quite deep. So today, right, I think I'll probably overwhelm a lot of you because uh, I will, I'll go into the details and I'll go into the calculation and, you know, by the end of the webinar, you probably, you know, already putting kapala already. Lah. But I'll try to break it down and make it as simple as I can so that all of you can follow. Okay, then the second thing is on the um, inverse ETF. Inverse ETF is on the flip side. So um, instead of giving you two times the return, it gives you the opposite uh, uh, direction of the index, which means that you only make money when the index is down for an inverse ETF. So, which means that um, if let's say we have a negative one times inverse ETF, if the index is down 1%, then the inverse ETF is up 1%. So, the price of the ETF will go up by 1%. Okay. Um, and of course, in the event if the index is up 1%, then the inverse ETF will be losing money. It will be negative 1%. Okay. This is the very, very, uh, you know, general concept of leverage and inverse ETF. So some, for some of you, how many of you here have actually traded warrants or are warrant, warrant traders? Can I have, uh, see, see a raise of hands or if you can put into uh, the chat? Anybody warrants trader here? Wow, so many. Uh. I see a lot of hand raise. 
Okay. Uh, not that many as a percentage, uh, but it's more than what I expect. Okay, uh, but it's good. Uh, if you have traded warrants, then you would know, uh, then L and I ETFs are actually uh, a little bit similar to it, uh, uh, warrants. So first of all, it tracks and index futures, just like uh, your warrants. And it also have market makers to provide liquidity. So a lot of you here would have said that, you know, ETFs are not liquid because nobody trades. The trading volume is so low. But this is a myth because later on, I will show you why it's a myth, all right? Now, the second thing is, um, although it is like warrants, but they are uh, features of this particular uh, product of the l &I ETFs that are not like warrants, which number one is it has no expiry date. So today, if you have you know, bought any warrants. And if you just hold it and do nothing, by the end of the expiry of the warrant, you probably lost, you know, all your uh, uh, capital. It become worthless, right? So usually for warrants, we do not hold uh, all the way until the expiry of, unless of course you're in the Manila, right? And then secondly, um, you know, uh, unlike warren is that it typically have a lower gearing or leverage ratio. So I think uh, the warrants in Malaysia easily has a uh, five, uh, you know, easily three uh, to sometimes 10 times leverage. So if you want to leverage a little bit, okay, and you don't want to go all out because, you know, not many people can tolerate uh, and take the, 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 you know, uh, high leverage exposure because, you know, it pumps up your heart unless of course you want to exercise your heart la, right uh, and, and make it pump faster then by all means warrants could be more suitable than uh, for you uh, but otherwise uh, you know l and ETFs generally have a lower leverage ratio because uh, from the Securities Commission perspective we are only allowed to issue up to a maximum two times leverage ETF so it will never go beyond two times okay now, so how does L and I ETF works um, to achieve its daily targeted return? So one, the first thing is that leverage and inverse ETF both will invest or use index futures to get the exposure. So you be you, you some of you might be wondering, you know, hey, if I give you a hundred dollars, how come you can give me two times the return? Do you borrow money from the bank to then buy more of the particular index or, or stocks? The answer is no. We simply use index uh, futures. So we, if you are familiar with futures, you would know that if you have an exposure to futures, you don't have to commit and pay the you know the, the contract amount, but you just merely put in a, a margin de um, a deposit of maybe. Uh, sometimes 10% or maybe a maximum like 20% of your total uh, uh, value of the contract. And that's how we actually give you the exposure uh, to leverage up the uh, you know, uh, exposure. Now, um, and because of that, uh, of the you know, beauty of um, the futures contract, so which means that the maximum amount that is committed as margin is only at maybe 30%. So if you give me $100, only up to a maximum of 30 uh, ringgit will be placed as margin deposit. The rest are actually kept in cash. So we could then potentially place it in uh, some money market instruments to earn you some interest. Okay. So for the leverage ETF, we typically long the index future. And for in that, uh, inverse ETF, we typically short the index futures. And that's how we, you, we give you um, the return uh, when the index falls, okay? Now, so some of you here, um, you know, may be confused because just now when I said um, the ETF actually aims to give you daily return, right? So if you think about l and I ETFs, we actually realize the, the gain or loss on a daily basis and it, that, it then gets compounded. So what essentially this means, uh, it's similar to, because of the daily rebalancing, it simply means that it's like your daily compounded interest, okay? So let, let me give you an example, right? So if, let's say you put your money into a savings account, okay? And this savings account says gives you 3% interest per annum, but on a daily rest. So if you... That what, that what it means is every day they will calculate that 3% per annum return to you and deposit it into or credit it into your account. And then over a course of one year, 
your return actually will be more than 3%, not just 3%. Okay? Uh, I hope you guys are following, you know, uh, uh, this, this concept because it's important. Now, let's walk through how um, the fund manager actually daily rebalance um, the leverage ETF for you. Okay? So, first thing first, um, on day one, okay, let's say the fund's NAV, which means uh, the fund manager in that particular fund has got $100, $100 okay? So, what I want to do as a fund manager for you is to buy into the index future worth 200 ringgit because I want to give you two times return. So, I will, I will buy uh, the contract worth 200 ringgit. So, I leverage it up for you. So, let's assume on that particular day, the index make a gain of 10%. Okay, the index goes up 10% for the day. So, what essentially it means is that because my fund has an exposure of 200 ringgit on that futures, so I multiply that by the index gain, which is 10%, and I will pocket the 20 ringgit gain. So I realize and capture my gain on that day. So that would mean that tomorrow, okay, I will buy more contract. Why? Because I have 100 ringgit I, and I already made 20 ringgit for the day. So the next day, I'm going to start off the fund. Now I have 120 ringgit. So again, based on 120 ringgit, yesterday I, I buy uh, the index contract worth 200 ringgit. Now 200 ringgit is not enough because I need to double up my new exposure, my new NAV, which is at 120 ringgit. So I double up my exposure again. It becomes 240 ringgit. Now, let's assume the index today dropped 10%. Yesterday make 10%, today drop 10%. So what happens is that you will have to incur a loss of 240 ringgit times 10%, which is 24 ringgit, okay? And then, um, you know, the next day, you need to, you start off again, it's a new day, okay? So you take 120 ringgit minus the 24 loss that you have uh, uh, lost, and you now start off the day with 96 ringgit. And therefore, I need to rebalance my exposure again, multiply that by two, and now I have an exposure of 192 ringgit. And in, in the event on that day, the index is up 10% again, then it's 192 times 10% and I pocket $19.20. Okay, it's a very simple concept. Uh, uh, I hope you guys are following and already not, you know, not confused now. Uh. So when we compound the returns on a daily basis, what essentially it means is that Today, you know, over a period uh, longer than a day, let's say three days, over these three days, even though the underlying index up 10% first day, down 10% second day, up 10% the third day, the cumulative return for that index is actually 8.9%. Okay? Then you must you'll be thinking, hey, just now you said uh, this particular ETF gives me two times return. How come you know, the two times leverage return here is not showing me 17.8% uh, because by right is 8.9 times 2, right? So the reason is very simple. is because we compound it. It's because of the compounding effect. So as a result of the compounding effect, it, will e it can either be in your favor, okay? Of course, if you have a very nice straight line um, index going up, then your return can potentially be more than double. But when it goes up and down volatile, then the returns, are, you know, the losses are also compounded and therefore your return cannot be exactly two times the return. Okay? Um, so, so, so you can take it as if it's, you know, it's like some slippage that happens as a result of this. All right? Okay. I think this one is really, really confusing. Um, but if for those you know, of you here who are nerds, who wants to know exactly how it's being computed, because I have a degree in mathematics, so I, I, I like to see numbers. Uh. So, so for me, 
uh, if you are if you want to know how uh, we, we calculate the return, this is how we actually calculate the return. So you need to take one plus two times the daily return, and then you multiply it and then minus by one to get that leverage ETF return. Okay, I'm not gonna um, go into details in this slide. Uh, if you're interested, uh, you can always watch the replay when you know do some mathematics uh, if you cannot sleep. Okay, now. Second thing um, is to illustrate how the daily rebalancing mechanism works for an inverse ETF. So we start off the day, let's say with 100. So what the fund manager will do is I will short the particular index worth 100 ringgit. So for the inverse ETF, there is no leverage exposure here. yeah. So it's just one time. Okay, we are not giving you any leverage exposure, which means that when it's down 1%, 1 you will be down 1%. Okay? Now, when the index make a loss of 10%, is that good news for the inverse ETF or not? It is. Why? Because inverse ETF is shorting the index. You only make money when the index goes down. Okay? So when the index is down, which means you got it right, you make 10% return. Okay, so negative 100 times negative, 10% uh, negative, negative becomes positive, right? So you make a gain of 10%. Okay, now day number two, because again, uh, I said every day the fund manager realized the gain or loss. And then I give you a, a, a new exposure based on today's value. So $100, I started off with $100 and I already made a $10 gain. So I need to now start off, my, in my pocket, I have $110 today in day two. And in day two, I need to then short the market again. I need to short the index futures again. Let's say I now have to short 110 okay? And assuming if the index make a gain of 10%, that would mean that you make a loss because you are shorting the market. You expect the market to drop, but it gained. So therefore, you make a loss. And on the third day, you now start the day with just 99 ringgit because you have to take 110 minus $11, okay? And then fund manager again then goes, uh, goes to the market to short it, okay? And you make a loss. If the index make a loss, you make a gain, all right? Okay, so how does the impact of this cumulative return works? Again, same thing, okay? Because of the compounding effect of the the, the you know, uh, uh, daily rebalancing, what happens is that if the underlying index over these three days is down negative 10.9%, uh, is down 10.9%, but your inverse, um, you know, return will not give you 10.9% over that three days, but instead it just gives you 8.9%. All these again are actually, um, you know, eroded because of the effect of compounding. Okay? I don't know how many of you are sudah pening kepala as of now uh, with all these uh, uh, numbers. Okay? Um, I think uh, okay, uh, every day the fund manager only invests 30% to purchase 200 value of future. Yes, you're right. So we purchase 200 ringgit worth of futures but I only need to pay up 30%. So that's like $60 committed, paid to the broker, okay, as margin deposit. And the rest are actually kept in cash. So we'll put it in savings account to earn some interest, right? Okay, seems that it's almost similar to derivatives. Uh, it is not a derivative. The only thing is we use futures contract. So, I mean, if you look at it, futures, are, futures contract, essentially, they are a form of derivative, Right. So, uh, in other words, this is a product that is, you know, uh, 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 investing into into derivative. Okay. Says <laughs> sudah pening already. Okay. It's okay to to not uh, understand fully, uh, but if you can understand the general concept, uh, that will be good. Which later on I can share with you one of our ETF. Okay. So I'm not gonna go through this uh, because if I if you see this, I think lagi pening uh. Okay. So, how can you, as an investor, then use LNI ETFs in your portfolio? Okay, so if it depends on how you want to strategize this, right? So 
depending on whether you have a shorter term tenure, meaning you want to trade actively, you could be holding it, um, the product from days to even months. Or some of you could have a medium to long term tenure. Maybe you want to hold it for a couple of months, you want to hold it for years, right? For as long term investment. So you can see that one thing that is very obvious is that I black out the inverse ETF for medium to long term. Why? Simply because most index, right? I'm sure you know whatever index that you see, if you take their long-term returns, what is the direction of the index? It's probably going up, right? There are volatilities, there are drop in between, but generally over a long term, you always see index going up, right? Hardly you will see index going down as low as our Kelsey is. Lah, huh? You're so bad. I hope Bursa won't, uh, next time I think Bursa won't invite me anymore lah, because I say, you know, Kelsey is low. Yeah. But as flat, you know, as sometimes KLCI can be, it is not on a downtrend. It is still on an uptrend. Okay? So that is why, um, that's the whole reason why I do not encourage holding inverse ETF for medium to long term. Unless, okay, um, it's like a 2007 uh, crisis, right? Where the market is down, it crashed, I think, and um, over a period of a few months, right? Um, unless it's those period, then you can actually buy and hold the invest uh, inverse ETF for a longer period. But if you were to say buy uh, the inverse ETF in March, right? And then you know because nobody expected the the index or the market to recover so fast. And as a result of that, if you hold it for long term, then you'll be caught. Okay? So that's why I do not encourage holding inverse ETF for the longer term. Okay? Inverse ETF, uh, uh, I would say it's mostly suitable for short-term trading. And when you have a very strong view that the, this index is actually coming down, then you can actually profit from there. So, so you know, just how early on Shane said, you know, how can you profit from a bull and bear market? So this is why we said this, simply because there is an inverse ETF option for you to buy when the index is coming down, which means you can make profit when the index is coming down. Okay. Some of you will say, you know, hey, then what's the difference with buying into or shorting the futures directly? So it's totally up to you. There isn't much um, difference, I would say, uh, except the fact that, you know, for futures, you need to uh, open another separate account and then you need to, to open with a broker and things like that and, and manage the margin deposit, you know, and the margin call, etc. So if you don't want those trouble, then I guess investing into the inverse ETF or maybe a put warrant could make sense uh, to investors. Or you can also use inverse ETF to hedge market risk or hedge some of your exposure. So let's assume today uh, you have an S&P 500 ETF, okay? Because it's the biggest ETF. So let's assume you hold the S&P 500 ETF and in March, you see the market crash. But you want to hold S&P 500 for the long term, but you foresee that there is this short-term market drop. So what can you do? Um, you know, uh, uh, should you then sell your, your S&P 500? So what some fund managers or what some retail investors could potentially do is to continue holding the S&P 500 ETF and then look for an S&P 500 inverse ETF to buy. So you don't really have to, you know, uh, uh, sell your S&P 500 ETF. You just need to buy the inverse so that when the market drops, you gain, right? And the other side, you lost, right? So you buffer off, you net off, right? One, one side, you gain, one side, you lose. So that's what we call hedging. Basically, you net off your gain and the loss uh, of, of these two uh, instruments that is similar. Okay. Now, for two times leverage ETF, uh, of course, typically, uh, we will only recommend uh, you to, to trade or to invest into two times leverage when you have a strong view that this particular index is on an upward trend. You want magnified returns, but you don't want anything you know, that is too risky, that is too um, uh, uh, high leverage. So if you think two times, you, know, you just want it to be leveraged a little bit, but a bit you know, scared, right? a bit uh, uh, 
scary, right? To 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 get this kind of exposure to leverage up to five times and things like that, then you can potentially consider this two times leverage ETF. And the other one, uh, for medium to long term, uh, I guess it only makes sense uh, if you're confident that this market is actually on an uptrend. And like it or not, when you hold it for a longer term, again, do not expect to get exactly two times the return. But you will probably still be better off uh, you know, uh, than, than one time. Okay, And you must be aware of this risk. And some of you who wants to trade, okay, can then also use technical analysis to time your entry and exit. But if you want to use technical analysis to time your entry, try not to apply it on the ETF itself. Because ETFs in Malaysia are not traded as frequent, so the prices um, can be a bit off. The price is off not because the price is wrong, yeah? The price is off because there was no transaction for the day, okay? So um, later on, I will explain a little bit on, on this part, lah, huh? okay? So what you need to do is, if you want to apply technical analysis, you need to apply it on the index itself, okay? Now, uh, is investing in inverse ETF similar to uh, writing a covered put? It's essentially similar to, to that or uh, equivalent to like a put warrant, like buying a put warrant. Okay? Right. So let me give you an example. So today we have, um, you know, four leverage and inverse ETF. Um, they are a pair, la, right? Uh, one is called the NYSE Fang Class 2 times leverage ETF. The other one is HSCEI leverage uh, ETF and another one is inverse ETF. So leverage and inverse ETF, they are two separate products, okay? Two separate stock code. Uh, if you want to get exposure to leverage, you need to buy uh, the leverage ETF. If you want to get exposure to the short uh, or to, to the, to the uh, inverse ETF, you need to buy the inverse ETF, okay? Now, let me give you an example. So we have this uh, two times leverage ETF uh, for NYSE Fang. So for those of you who are wondering, you know, what's NYSE Fang? Uh? New York Stock Exchange, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, plus, plus means the kawan-kawan, okay? Kawan-kawan like uh, Alibaba, Baidu, NVIDIA, Twitter, and Tesla, our all-time favorite, okay? Elon Musk. So this is, this is actually an index, so some of you may think, oh, got such index one. Uh, you know, I've only heard of S&P 500, uh, KLCI, you know, Hong Kong, HSI, and, and things like that. There are actually many, many different types of uh, index out there uh, that could be maybe, you know, not so popular, but they are. So this particular index is called the NYSE Fang Plus uh, Index Future. Uh, I'm using this screen. Uh, I took this screenshot from TradingView. So even though, uh, you know, SC uh, sudah banned this TradingView website, uh, but I'm still using it for comparison purpose. Lah, huh? I, I'm not using it to receive any buy or sell calls. So what I do is that I look for this particular futures contract, which is called, uh, which is uh, with the symbol or ticker code FNG one exclamation mark. So if you go to trading view, you can actually find this particular index. So let's assume, and I've also stacked the FANG two times leverage ETF here. Okay. So I think the red line here, okay, the red line represents the FANG two times leverage ETF that we have. And then the, the bar, okay, the bars are actually your FANG index future. So I've, I've put in, let's assume we use technical analysis to time our entry and exit. And I think some, some traders want to, you know, who wants to try and keep it simple, they may potentially use EMA9 as, um, you know, the, the entry or exit call. This one is totally up to you. Uh, this is just an example. And I'm not saying that this, um, this particular uh, indicator is the, the most accurate and things like that, okay? So if you have, you know, uh, uh, let's say just stack, draw the EMA9 line versus your FANG uh, index or FANG futures contract um, uh, price, what you do is then you will see signals will be generated when 
the price of the index is actually above the EMA 9. So let's assume you see this particular entry signal on the 12th of August. Okay. And at this point, you because um, the, the US market is, uh, you know, uh, at, happens at night, right? So by the time it closed, we only see the price 13 August, the next day morning. Okay. So the price as of yesterday close will be reflected in today, uh, today Bursa opening. Okay. So let's say if you enter on the 13th of August, because the entry signal was triggered on the 12th of August. So at that point in time, that particular ETF was priced at $7.44. Okay. And then, you know, the it, it was on an uptrend, uptrend, all the way up to the 3rd of September, when we see a drop where the uh, price of the futures contract actually crosses below the EMA 9, indicating an exit signal. So when that happens, you again, same thing, you exit the FANG leverage ETF on the 4th of September. And on that day, on the 4th of September, the price would have been $9.17. Um, this, these prices are actually the NAV of the fund. Yeah? So when you exit uh, on the 4th, you would have made a gain of 23% over the period of about three weeks. Okay? Right. So um, this is an example or illustration of how this thing works and how you can actually use technical analysis to actually time uh, the entry and exit. Okay? Now, this particular ETF that we have, which is the uh, FANG Plus ETF, was listed in November 2019. And we listed it at uh, 4 ringgit. Okay? And now, it is traded at 13 ringgit. 13 plus. Okay? I think the peak was at about 14, 15, thereabout. So, again, if you are a strong believer of the FANG stocks, Okay, and if you don't mind holding it a long term for a long term period, um, and you don't want to go to the US market to get the exposure, this could be a product that could suit you. But disclaimer here, please go and read through the prospectus um, to understand the product fully before you trade. Now, this is another example of uh, you know, the uh, leverage ETF that we have which tracks the Hang Seng China Enterprise Index. So many of you here, if you have traded Warren, um, we know the Macquarie uh, Hang Seng Index Warren is very, very popular amongst um, retailers uh, in Malaysia. And this Hang Seng China Enterprise Index is also listed in Hong Kong. But instead of tracking the top uh, companies in Hong Kong, it tracks the top uh, Hong Kong uh, Chinese uh, domicile Ca uh, companies listed in Hong Kong. So you get all your Bank of China, um, your Tencent and companies like that in this index. Okay. So you can actually apply the same thing, uh, same concept, same strategy and time your entry. But one thing to note is really to use the index and not the ETF price. Okay. Now, how you can actually look at some of the back-tested um, strategy, if let's say you want to back-test your own strategy, right? You can actually, if you're interested in any of our products, you can go to our website, tradeplus.com.my, where we actually have um, a, a performance simulator. They are called simulator, but they are essentially actual NAV for the fund, actual price for the fund. So you can use that to, to, to basically backtest your strategy and say that, hey, you know, if let's say I enter on, you know, on, on the 1st of October and I hold it uh, for, for three weeks um, and exit on the 23rd of October, what would my returns, uh, uh, what, what would uh, my returns uh, would be, right? And you can actually simulate all this in our website, okay? Now, so the, there is one question uh, that people will always ask, right? So can, you know, um, although we strongly discourage you holding long-term, but can L&I ETFs really be held for the long-term? Um, the answer is 
yes, provided you don't mind that, that you know, slippage because, um, because of the volatility, because of the up and down of this, uh, you know, of any index, um, you won't get the exact two times. So if you don't mind that, yeah, then why not hold it for the long term? Okay, so this is an example of, an, uh, of the S&P 500 futures versus the S&P 500 two times leverage ETF. So as you can see, right, um, since launch of the uh, S&P 500 two times leverage, uh, you will notice that the return is actually lower than the actual S&P 500, okay? Because maybe the swings uh, when it comes down is actually a lot uh, different. But if you actually compare it in the shorter term, you will see that sometimes return can be more than double simply because it could be on a very strong uh, uptrend and a you know daily uh, compounded. Okay. So do you mean investing in short term the return is closer to two times? Uh, it really depends on how much swing there is in um, the the particular index. Uh, definitely the shorter uh, the the tenure, uh, the closer it is to two times, but it, it's not necessarily the case, okay? Because it really depends on the direction of the particular ETF. Is six months considered midterm? Actually, to be honest, right, um, whether a tenure is considered long-term, short-term, is actually, you know, if you ask me, it differs from one person to another. Say, for example, to me, right, maybe to me, one month is short term. But to some of you, hey, one month is considered midterm. Like, you know, my short term is just two days or five days or even intraday, you know. So for me, there is no um, uh, actual definition. But typically, um, if let's say for from the unit trust world, uh -huh, anything that is one year and below, we deem it as short term. Anything that is one year to three years is midterm, and anything above three years is long term. But again, it depends. You know, some people really have very different perception of long term and short term. Right now, let's take a look at the Fang uh, futures contract versus the Fang two times leverage ETF that we have. So as you can see, um, again, uh, since launch, uh, the futures is up one hundred thirty seven percent. But the the uh you know ETF is up, uh leverage ETF is up two hundred and forty three percent. Okay, um over a one month period you can see you know index of futures contract is up five point four, but the two times leverage is only up nine point eight three percent. Okay, so these two times are really you know is 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 not um. Uh, fixed. La. So uh, that's why, you know, just now the formula I show you is important. Um, but again, if you don't want to really, you know, calculate and really squeeze that two times, you know, until so accurately, then, you know, holding it just by understanding the general concept. And of course, uh, you do not mind um, getting that, that slightly um, or, or sometimes even maybe lower returns uh, than your one time. If you are willing to take that risk and if you understand it fully, then, then to be honest, um, to me, it's fine, right? So let me address one very important question, okay? How many of you here, okay, maybe before I show you this screen, how many of you here thinks that ETFs are not liquid? Can I have a show of uh, hand? You can raise your hand. You can type yes in the chat box, okay? If you think that ETFs are not liquid or are illiquid, show me your hands. <laughs> okay. So uh, not that many people raise hands. I don't know. Uh, it's because uh, the answer is I don't know. Or the answer is, uh, you know, uh, or, or, or don't really want to answer, lah, huh? but it's fine, okay? Because we're all here to learn. Now, whenever we um, assess a company or a share or stocks to determine if it is liquid or not liquid, okay, is the fact that you will look at trading volume as an indication, right? So, the more um, uh, this company is being traded, 
then you say that, hey, okay, that means there's a lot of supply and demand. Then you call it liquid, right? Meaning that you can get in, you can get out easily, right? And as a result of um, you know, high trading volume, usually it will also result in narrower spread because there are more participants, right? There are more people uh, uh, wanting to buy and wanting to sell. Then naturally, it narrows the spread, okay? On the flip side, when you have a stock where it is illiquid, okay? If it's illiquid, then um, you will see that number one, the trading volume is generally low. Not many people queue to buy and sell and the spreads are generally wider as well, okay? So now I want to bust this myth, huh? okay? So the reason why, okay, a lot of people think that ETFs are not liquid is simply because the trading volume is low. Sometimes uh, the trading volume is not just low, you know, it's zero. <laughs> so it's not just low, it's zero. And therefore, investors like yourself will conclude and say that, hey, ETFs are illiquid or not liquid. Okay. But some of you who, you know, want to try and have been observing, the reason why I know is because sometimes I go and read some forums and then people will say, hey, ini apa ni? You see, like for example, uh, wah, tiap tiap hari uh, got one fella there, one person only, uh, 1,000 lot on the buy side and 1,000 lot on the sell side. Why these two person cannot give in and, and just match your price man? Right? Why can't you just trade? And you will, and the actual fact is, this 1,000 lot of 188 and 189, for example, for the HSCI inverse ETF, they are our market makers. Okay, so these market makers are appointed by Afrin Huang Asset Management to provide liquidity in the market. So that's why their job every day is to go into the market, I quote a buy price, I quote a sell price, so that whoever wants to buy, just hit the sell price and the trade is done immediately. And whoever wants to, you know, have been holding the share and wants to dispose of this share can then uh, hit the buy price and the transaction is done. Okay? And some of you will say, huh, 1,000 lot, that's very, very little. But ETFs, are actually um, uh, uh, open-ended, which means that even though you see 1,000, it doesn't mean that this market maker only has 1,000, okay? So who is the counterparty? The market makers that we have appointed are Afin Huang Investment Bank. Uh, and for the FANG ETF, uh, the market maker is Malacca Securities. So the brokers are actually the ones uh, quoting these prices every day, okay? So if you don't believe me, Tomorrow onwards, I'm not asking you to trade. Huh? Tomorrow onwards, go and observe, add the ETFs into your favorite list to track. I'm not asking you to trade. I'm asking you to monitor. Okay? Just take a look. On Consistently, the market makers will be there to give you that buy and sell price. Okay? So the market makers now... Another common question that will come up is, will the market makers then try to um, take advantage on retail investors? So the market makers have to price it based on the market price. Okay, And the good thing about this is, there is actually a website for you to verify if that particular price is fair or not. Okay, I don't know if we have it in this. Okay, never mind. You can actually go to Bursa Marketplace website, okay, to look at whether uh, uh, this particular price that this market maker is quoting is a fair value. Because there is this uh, uh, website by Bursa Marketplace where they list down all the ETFs in Malaysia and they appointed a third party to calculate the NAV of the fund at an interval of 15 minutes. So, which means every 15 minutes, they recalculate the NAV or the price of the ETF, the fair value, and they'll put it up. So, as, a inform, as an informed investor, you should always go to that website, check what is the current price that is fair, 
and then go back to your trading screen to see if it's a fair price or not. Of course, um, on our side, uh, as Afin Huang uh, uh, Asset Management, the issue of the ETF, we will also monitor the behavior of our market makers. And so far, they don't cheat investors. Da. They really quote based on the fair value of the ETF. Okay, And if, assuming we catch them uh, doing that, um, you know, they will be penalized because at the end of the day, it is a legal uh, you know, agreement that binds uh, this market making uh, activity okay so will the market maker actually adjust the price when there is no buy or sell interest from investors the answer is no so um, market makers main objective is really to quote you a price uh, to to um, you know give you the fair value uh, which side to check okay later I will show you uh, where to to get the the price okay it's on Bursa marketplace website all right, so after talking, you know, about, uh, you know, these benefits or advantages of trading l and ETFs, now let's take a look at what are the potential risks, right? So uh, one thing we definitely have to highlight is the long-term investment holding risk because uh, the returns are compounded on a daily basis. So therefore, you don't get the two times exactly returns. So there is that risk of the long-term investment holding uh, risk. Leverage risk if you invest into the leverage ETF and inverse risk if you invest into the inverse risk. Um, portfolio turnover risk um, because l &I ETFs, like I said earlier, is rebalanced on a daily basis. So which means that the portfolio is turned over very, very quickly because every day I need to look at my, my what I have now after taking into account yesterday's profit or loss, I adjust my leverage or inverse ratio. Okay. Uh, futures investment risk, of course, we are investing into the futures contract. So um, the price of this ETF would be impacted by the futures price. Okay. And last but not least is the trading hours difference risk. Uh, this only applies to the NYSE FANG Plus uh, uh, leverage and inverse ETFs. All right. Okay. So the LNI ETFs that are currently available in Malaysia, not that many. They are just six uh, because, um, you know, uh, we are still trying to build up the ETF um, seen in Malaysia. So we have Trade Plus, NYSE, Fang Plus, Daily Leverage Inver and Inverse Tracker. Uh, we have Hang Seng China Enterprise. So these uh, uh, two are actually by Afin Huang. And Kenanga also has one, uh, two, uh, a leverage and an inverse ETF that tracks the FBM KLCI. So if you think that you know the KLCI is up and uh, will go be uh, going up and you want to take opportunity uh, to leverage, you can potentially get that exposure through the Kananga uh, two times leverage ETF. Okay. Now, after listening to all this, assuming some of you, uh, you know, very gung ho, very excited, want to trade the LNI ETFs tomorrow, you need to do a few things. Um, on top of having a CDS trading account, you actually need to fulfill certain requirements. So, because Leverage and inverse ETFs are new. Um, the SC and Bursa actually wants investors to be uh, to basically equip yourself with the necessary knowledge before you can trade. So these are all criteria, which means that there are four criteria here. You just need to meet either one of it. You either be a sophisticated investor where you have three million net worth, or you can have a margin account with a, the broker or you have executed at least five transactions in exchange traded derivatives could be futures or warrants in the past 12 months. And last but not least, you can also go to Bursa's website, um, go uh, watch their um, you know, tutorial or, or e-learning module, and then uh, you get a cert from Bursa, and then go to website uh, of uh, the issuer website like ourselves, to view um, the particular uh, performance simulator, the one that I showed you earlier, where you can adjust the, the dates and then it will show you the performance of that ETF. And when you do that, uh, you will then need to show it to your broker, sign a declaration to say that you understand the risk, blah, blah, blah. Then you are allowed to trade. But unfortunately, there are some um, uh, brokers who do not accommodate this. For example, uh, Rakuten Trade does not um, allow l and i ETF. So no matter what you do, you won't be able to trade on uh, Rakuten Trade's uh, platform. I think Fun Supermart, uh, who is also a new broker in Malaysia, I think they have not gotten themselves ready as well. Okay, so you need to actually contact your remise here. 
to understand that. Okay, so uh, there's a question on the code for FANG inverse ETF. So FANG inverse is 0831EA, okay? Okay, so this is actually the Bursa Academy video course that I mentioned, the tutorial. So you can actually go to Bursa Academy uh, website. And then after that, after the completion, you will get a nice little certificate. Uh, FANG code uh, 0830EA and 0831EA. Okay, I'm going to type it here in the chat. Okay, so this is the example of our performance simulator. Okay, so again, hit the tradeplus.com.my website. Okay, now let me uh, very, very quickly go to um, where you can find the price. Okay, give me a minute. Huh? Okay, let me just share my screen. Okay. Now you can see this, right? This is Bursa Marketplace website. Uh, so you can go to share market on top here and then click on ETFs. Okay, loading. Okay. So this is the list of ETFs that are available in Malaysia. Like I said, look for this IOPV column here. There's this column called IOPV. So IOPV stands for Indicative Optimized Portfolio Value. In other words, it is the intraday NAV. Okay. So let's take a look at Trade Plus uh, ETF. Okay. So you will see that, for example, this. NYSE FANG two times leverage, the IOPV is at $12.786. Uh, $12 so this indicates that this is actually the fair value of the ETF at this juncture. Okay, so this is actually calculated every, uh, I think, 15 minutes. Yeah, so it's delayed, of course, uh, at the 15 minutes, but typically, ETFs are not that, uh, you know, volatile as compared to stocks uh, because it's a basket, right? So, so uh, even though it's delayed 15 minutes, but personally, I find that it is actually a good enough indicator. Okay. Okay. Um, so, I will stop share. Okay. Uh, and let me... Go back, get back to Shin. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Li Zhu, for sharing with us how we can use inverse and leverage ETF tactically in a bull and also bear market. So I think that, uh, I'm sure that you all have learned a great deal about leverage and inverse ETF, and especially on the compounding effect uh, that you must know. Uh. So if you hold longer than one day, the desired return may not be similar to what the uh, ETF intended to do. Lah. So you must know longer than one day, uh, the, the, the impact is not exactly the same like uh, two times or negative one times. So if any questions,